So Pew Research has a new poll on whether phone tracking should be used to fight terror. A majority, or 56 percent, were fine with it. But so what? It's the change of views depending on who's president at the time that's key to me. For example, when Bush was president, 61 percent of Dems said tracking was wrong. Now under Obama, 64 percent say it's okay. A total reversal, as drastic as a sex change. As for Republicans, under Bush, 75 percent said it was okay. Under Obama, it goes down to 52. My point, there are a buttload of hypocrite Democrats and a fair amount of Republicans, too, which is why you must honestly ask, are they motivated less by principle and more by politics? I find it weird watching big defenders of civil liberties uh, say the opposite just years ago. Me, I believe the world's changed. Our enemy is way different, and we need to adapt to save our civilization. You'd be wrong if you thought I'm forfeiting any freedoms. I'm simply consistent about doing everything possible to protect my family, my way of life. Collecting phone calls without listening to them, it's like a trash man picking up my trash. If there's a crime on my street, they can sift through the local dump. After all, that's the world's first outbox. You may think I'm wrong, but at least I don't change my tune depending on who's in charge. And the administration is guilty of some really, really, really bad stuff. The IRS, Benghazi, Fast and Furious, it stinks to high heaven. But what stinks more, sacrificing your beliefs for the false security of lockstep. Andrea, do you see that? What do you think of this poll, of this shift? Uh, is it political or principled? I think it's probably a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, but in politics, I guess you go with the person that you trust. That's right. why you, Good you, point. you voted for them. I do think, though, trust is eroding um, in President Obama. And what really angers me, because I think you hit such a good point in your monologue. We have a president now that told us just two weeks ago there was no war on terror. Right. We're not at war with radical Islam. So you go, then why are you doing, doing all this. of this? And in fact, the only reason we have all of these defense contractors that we're paying at $1.3 billion a year is because of the big, vast government bureaucracy that's too incompetent to do it on its own. Yeah. So it just begs the question, what are we doing? And then we have people like Snowden leaking that information. Right. So if we're not going to acknowledge the enemy, why are we waiting? Wasting money on all of this. Fantastic point. And that is, I guess that's maybe not trust, but that's just incompetence. And, and, it, and it's fear and cowardice to address what the enemy really is. If you can't call it radical Islam, why are we, then who are we chasing? Then tea partiers? Then a bunch of numbers and yeah. phone calls yeah. isn't going to do anything. Now they're looking for tea partiers, right, Bob? No, <laughs> let's, let's think about what this is here. This, these uh, proliferation of intelligence. Intelligence groups, agencies in this town have gone up dramatically since 9-11. That's what happened. It was a trigger because of 9-11. Right. We have now 1.2 million contractors, 1.2 million with top secret clearances. Top secret clearances are a big deal. And the fact is, Greg, would you have endorsed this uh, uh, intercept operation under Bush or not? That's why I'm trying to – that's what I'm saying. That's why I cannot – I can't I, – I was – Okay with this under Bush, and I'm okay with it now. And if I change my tune, I, I wouldn't feel right with myself because I believe that terror is the number one threat in the world. It's different, though, guys. It's I know it's I know it's different, different under Obama. I get your mm -hmm. point, but, but it's even different. Not forget who was president. It's different because uh, under President Bush, it was and wh the way it was supposed to be. If you have someone that you have sus you suspect of either terrorism or espionage, right. you can go after him. You can ex make it expansive. You can go after their whole group. You can go after not only a Muslim. You can go after a mosque or a group of mosques in in an area. This is way so much far more expansive without anyone in. There's no intent. They don't even have a something they're looking it was for. And that's that, Bush. What are you talking no, about? No, it wasn't, Bob. This yes, is, it that, was. There was absolutely it absolutely no, was. Absolutely correct. Because under Bush, you go to the FISA court, and the FISA court is they Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. I understand Act, what it and is. And you had to have a, 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 at least one foreign body communicating with, with an American. How is that different now? You don't have, they didn't need it. They, did, they had no one on the hook who was a foreigner communicated with anyone. They blanket said, I oh, will take all the Verizon customers for this period of yeah, time. Yeah, but then the second step is they have to see a phone call come out to go in well, before they, they go. They, 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 they the Trump through. lines in the Bush administration for Verizon and, uh, and Comcast. Why do you think they did that? What are you asking? Well, well, they, 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 they took the, the communications out of the Verizon no, no. trunk lines. No, no. They, yeah, but they didn't ask for it because they had a specific communication that they were trying to ask for. I thought they didn't, Bob. We go look at the document. They, look at the document. They, they went to FISA court and had, they had something like 33,000 requests of FISA and 11 were turned in.
Yeah, Check me on this, Mr. Did they not, or did they get in all kinds of tr uh, arguments about whether they should be going into getting these companies to give them that information? You yeah. Back then, you mean? Yes. Oh, I agree with you. Back then, but that was different. That's my point. They were held to higher scrutiny then than, than they are now. Is there a great reason why the administration should? I'm going to agree with the ACLU. Let's just see it all. Right. Let's have an explanation. Yep. What? Because I feel like we're just dealing with a bunch of uh, clouds. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what the actual facts are. The whole, the entire program, the expansion yep. of it, uh, how it changed, how it adapted. I would say on the on the trust on the on the trusting in government, um, uh, and the poll that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, Trust in President Bush at the time that the terror surveillance program was leaked to the New York Times mm -hmm. on the front page for days and days was low yeah. at this, during the second part of the second first year of the second term. Right. That is now true for President Obama as well. But the media, it's interesting, it was Glenn Greenwald of The Guardian who got this story, mm -hmm. not the New York Times. I think that the media coverage of it has something to do with this. Also, people just adjust to change in a global war on terror. Yeah, last word? Just, I, I just would love to know how the left expects us to go after terrorists and keep us safe, right? What so if they're not going to acknowledge a war on terror, if yeah. they don't like drone strikes, if they don't like enhanced interrogation, and now they're going crazy about the surveillance program, how do they propose that we go after terror? Be Apology. Nice. Dr drone, That's true. Be nice. Say kind and things. Legal, give drone strikes and, and intercepts. Legal Flatter intercepts their and drone strikes. pottery All skills right. and tapestry.